Hello everyone, my name is Colin and you are watching Classy Herbs. So today I have a pretty unique animal here for you guys to check out today. Um, this is one that I had never actually even heard of before I started working here and kind of got um, working with these guys firsthand. Um, so that kind of just goes to show the uniqueness of them. But um, when most people first look at this, they're kind of contradicted because you first think snake because it doesn't have legs obviously, but then you look at the face and it just doesn't quite look like a snake. And just how it moves and how it acts doesn't quite seem snake-like. Um, and that is because it is is actually a lizard and uh, it's it's a lizard that has evolved to be like a snake and has lost its legs these guys don't even have the vestigial structures left over like a lot of pythons and boas do um, they are completely legless uh, so what actually makes them a lizard is the fact that uh, they they have um, uh, a mouth that is designed to eat prey items like insects so they primarily eat crickets mealworms dubia roaches things like that they have eyelids, they um, don't have scales over their eyes, so that's like a lizard does, they can blink. Um, and if you can see on the side of his head there, he actually has ear holes, like a lizard does, and snakes do not have those. So, um, and those are traits that kind of diverged a long time ago. Uh, so, kind of an interesting thing, and as you see he's flicking his tongue out there, um, you notice that his tongue isn't forked like a snake, it's actually um, kind of like a big fat tongue like a bearded dragon would have or something like that. So um, they don't really have a lot of the same body parts or they're designed a little bit differently but um, yeah very unique animal. One thing that you can see uh, that one most people always ask me first right away is like what is that like stripe down his side it looks like he's broken. Um, so this this right here is actually um, a, an adaptation to be like a snake and have a snake's body but have the lizard scales. Um, so as you see, he doesn't really have a scale pattern like a snake does. His, he's very armored, has very thick, heavy scales, and so those scales don't stretch when he eats or when he breathes. So to be able to stretch, like when a snake does, they can actually stretch between each scales and they're very flexible. This guy cannot do that. So he has to have a place where he can actually spread apart, and that's what that little bar right there is for. You can actually kind of see it spreading apart a little bit there as he's breathing. But when he eats like a big prey item, that can actually spread out quite a bit. Um, and a very unique thing about them is you can see where that ends right here, um, that's actually his cloaca. So um, for like a full body shot, these guys actually have a longer tail than their body. Um, and that is pretty bizarre. So uh, all the way from here down is tail. And that's another unique adaptation because um, as a lizard he can atomize his tail or drop his tail like most people call it. And um, that is an adaptation to get away from predators, but these guys don't drop the whole tail all at once. They have this very unique adaptation that I don't think any other lizard really does, but they'll break off segment by segment of their tail. So like the first bit will come off, and then another bit will come off, and another bit, and another bit. So um, in the wild, when these guys are actually like trying to get away from predators and stuff, when you find them, um, it's very rare for them to have a full tail like this, because pieces of it have just come off along its lifetime as it's gotten away from things or whatnot. Um, and it doesn't regenerate. It, it, it can a little bit, kind of like a tegu might be able to regenerate a little bit of its tail, but it, it certainly not look, it doesn't look anything like the original, and it's never going to be as fully as long. Um, but I kind of wanted to give you guys just a quick comparison here. To um, These guys are actually way closer related to each other, these two that I have in my hand here, than this is to it. Um, and I just kind of want to point out the, the details here um, when I hold them up to each other so that you guys can visually see that. Um, this legless lizard that I have is actually very closely related to a blue tongue skink. Um, you could imagine that if you were to just cut the legs off of this skink right here, it would almost have the exact same body as the legless lizard. And that's pretty much what happened to this guy. So um, it's a pretty unique animal that kind of happened that um, this body plan right here that we typically think of as uh, exclusive to snakes has actually happened twice. Um, but in one case it only happened in a handful of species and most of them are pretty um, uh, uncommon in the pet trade compared to snakes. So, um, just after showing you guys that, I uh, kind of want to discuss like some, like these guys you can actually find them, not this species, but a very closely related version of this um, in North America here. Uh, people call them glass lizards and things like that, but they're actually a legless lizard, um, similar to this. This is actually a Russian legless lizard, so it's the largest of the species of legless lizards, and they do get pretty thick. Um, they'll get a little bit longer than this, but they can actually get like considerably thicker, like that big around. So um, they can eat some pretty big stuff. They can even eat like small mice once they're fully grown, kind of like these guys would. Um, 
they, they are a little bit omnivorous, so they'll eat some other stuff, but primarily a uh, protein-based diet. Um, and you can see he's pretty active there, and you see how he's kind of like trying to wiggle himself into almost into my skin like that? That's an adaptation for burrowing. These guys spend a lot of their time kind of like just scooting around through the sand. They never leave the ground. They're very low, uh, very similar to what this guy would do, but just completely lost his legs. So I hope you guys can see the similarities and differences there. Um, you have any questions, Kurt? So they don't constrict their prey at all? Nope. It's actually really kind of strange to watch one of these guys eat because it's like watching a snake chew on bubble gum, I always kind of think. Like, when they get a cricket or a mealworm in their mouth, they'll just like sit there and they'll, they'll munch on it like a bearded dragon or one of these blue tongue skinks would. Um, but it's like watching a snake chew on something. And it's, it's really kind of strange because you never see a snake chew on something, but these guys do.